trigger warning. This podcast contains descriptions of various abusive situations. Listener discretion is advised. You are listening to the Preacher Boys Podcast, a podcast shedding light on decades of mental, physical, and sexual abuse within the independent fundamental Baptist movement. The testimonies shared on this podcast are told from the personal experience and perspective of the survivors. Not all legal outcomes are known or final. Any suspect is presumed innocent until proven guilty in the court of law. Now, here is your host, Eric Skwarzynski. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Preacher Boys podcast. Dr. Steve Pettit, president of Bob Jones University, the Fundamentalist College in South Carolina, resigned on March 31st, 2023. For me, it feels like not too long ago that the bombshell report from Grace dropped about Bob Jones University. In 2015, after a two-year investigation, the report revealed that for 40 years, numerous cases of abuse that occurred both on and off campus were mishandled by BJU leadership. Survivors claim that in instances which took place at the college, proper authorities were not notified, and that in many cases, survivors in counseling at BJU were blamed for bringing the abuse on themselves. The majority of the issues seem to be centered around Bob Jones III and former Dean of Students, Jim Berg, who also created the toxic counseling materials used with victims. Near the end of the investigation, May of 2014, Dr. Steve Pettit became president of Bob Jones University. The Greenville News reported in March 26 of 2015 that Pettit began meeting with survivors, saying sexual abuse is a heinous crime that requires abusers be brought to justice. He noted that some had been helped by loving counseling, but acknowledged that others had not. He said it was apparent that the university was too focused on rules and not enough on people. For many, statements like these and the fact that many hardcore fundamentalists were unhappy with Pettit's hiring gave a glimmer of hope that Pettit could be an arbiter of change within the school, despite its rocky past. Fast forward, and on March 31st, 2023, almost nine years since Pettit became president of BJU, he has submitted his resignation from the school. The resignation comes just days after Pettit wrote a letter which revealed several concerning issues relating to Dr. John Lewis, chairman of BJU's board of trustees. In the five-page letter, which is available to read in its entirety, along with a fantastic write-up over on FITSnews.com, Pettit accused Lewis of holding off-site secret meetings without informing key university leadership. He says, quote, Although I have repeatedly urged the chairman, both in private and before the board, to pursue unity, he's not done so, and instead has adopted a posture of secrecy and hostility toward the board and the administration. For example, executive committee meetings have been moved to Bob Jones III's private residence. The chairman forbade trustees from telling the university's professional parliamentarian and longstanding corporate counsel about a meeting of the board that had been called in February of 2023. Minutes of executive committee meetings often have not been timely prepared and provided to other trustees. And contrary to university policies, sensitive board documentation has been stored outside the university's secured network on a new computer purchased at the chairman's instruction. Pettit also claims that trustees were hindered or prevented from printing documents they should have had access to. Other allegations are made, including that Lewis seemed, quote, disinterested in the financial stability of the university, or that, quote, poor decisions have been repeatedly made concerning good board governance. And lastly, and maybe most concerningly, that Lewis had interfered with reporting of a sexual harassment case to the school's designated Title IX coordinator, which would be required by law. I'll read Pettit's letter verbatim here. He says, quote, The chairman has taken actions in the past few weeks to thwart the trustee's decision in February to report a matter to the university's Title IX coordinator as required by law. This followed months of ignoring, minimizing, and delaying consideration of the issue, which arose from one trustee's alleged public comments to an alumnus in the presence of a faculty member about whether female students' clothing and female student-athletes' uniforms accentuate their, quote, boobs and butts, end quote. The alumnus letter of complaint to the board also alleged that the trustee may have taken unconsented photographs of female students. I don't know if these allegations are true or not, but our obligation was and is to treat them the same way we would any other such allegations, and in February, the trustees agreed to refer the matter to the Title IX coordinator, The chairman has recently taken the following steps to impede or obstruct this investigation. 
When the university's Title IX coordinator requested relevant excerpts of board meeting minutes, the chairman responded eight days later by providing one set of meeting minutes that were almost entirely redacted, including any relevant discussion, and an excerpt from a single executive committee meeting containing two relevant sentences. He followed up on that by sending the Title IX coordinator a four-page letter, plus attachments on March 17, 2023, that did the following ordered the coordinator to suspend and postpone the inquiry and investigation until a later date, falsely accused me, Pettit in this instance, of working secretly with positive BJU to weaponize the Title IX process in a coup d'etat of the chairman, falsely accused the Title IX coordinator of lying to the board, complained about the notice of formal complaint that the coordinator had issued as required by law, and falsely accused the university's independent outside Title IX council of bias and conflict of interest. Pettit goes on to say, I am not commenting on the merits or demerits of the Title IX claim, but as the trustees agreed in February, referring the matter to the Title IX coordinator to follow the normal course is right and legally required to do. Impeding the process is not. The chairman's recent actions place the university and the board in a perilous position. Pettit closed the letter stating that, quote, If Dr. Lewis remains the chairman or a member of the executive committee, I am prepared to tender my resignation as president of Bob Jones University on March 31st, 2023, effective immediately. Well, on March 31st, Pettit did just that. Bob Jones University released a statement saying, This afternoon, the BJU Board of Trustees regretfully accepts the resignation of Dr. Steve Pettit as president of Bob Jones University. The chair and the full board voiced overwhelming support to him, but each one of us respects his decision to resign and are deeply thankful for his years of dedicated service to the mission of BJU and its faculty, staff, and students. We wish him God's best in future endeavors. It's worth noting that no mention in the statement was made of Pettit's serious allegations against Lewis. Reading all this information, it seems Pettit, in this case, was trying to do the right thing at BJU and got pushed out for doing so. His comments regarding the Title IX reporting specifically seem to indicate that the unsafe environment reported at BJU in the early 2010s by Grace has not changed much whatsoever. And with the BJU board accepting his resignation rather than working to enact change, it doesn't seem the environment's going to be changing anytime soon. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Preacher Boys podcast. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to the Preacher Boys podcast. If you appreciated the content on the show, please leave a review on iTunes and don't forget to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter with the handle at Preacher Boys Doc. 